Hi, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. And I produce a lot of videos, lots and lots of videos, covering various repairs to motorcycles, quad bikes, riding ATVs and of course cars as well. Not to mention some other stuff. Um, these videos are predominantly used by my, or viewed by my students uh, to, to help them to understand um, real world scenarios, jobs, repairs that come into the workshop. And today we have a, what is it, 90, 1991 Honda CRM250. Um, this is in New Zealand road legal. So it's fair to say it's done some work by now. It's pretty old, a bit long in the tooth hasn't really been that well looked after either, in all honesty. Um, sort of ridden into the ground. The tyres are shot on it. Uh, it's come into the workshops today to have the front brake fixed. At the moment, it's, it's binding on and it's not really very efficient. It's not very powerful. Um, and if you pull the lever in, you can pretty much get the lever all the way to the handlebars. Um, and there's no way it's anywhere close to locking the front wheel up. So the efficiency is way down, uh, it's binding as well. It's going to end up with some fresh fluid in it. We may even pull the master cylinder off and strip that down and, and degunk it. I don't have a seal kit for it, so we'll do the best we can. There's no visible external leaks and it doesn't lose fluid, which is a good sign. Uh, we'll also pull the caliper off. We're going to pop both pistons out. It's a floating caliper with two pistons, so we're going to pop both those two pistons out. If they're really badly corroded, the customer's going to have to bite the bullet and buy some new pistons. And obviously a seal kit. Um, so, really, let's make a start, see what we find, go from there. Okay, so the first job is going to be to crack off the banjo bolts. That's a 12. And, of course, that's going to cause it to uh, dribble fluid all over the place. In fact, before we even start, let's do a bit of PPE stuff going on. Keep everybody happy. Because we're going to be dealing with brake fluid, and brake fluid is um, pretty nasty stuff, actually. It can take paint off. Uh, it really, really hurts your eyes if you get it in there. I know that from experience. I was bleeding up an old farm quad bike a long time ago. And uh, some of the brand new fluid sprayed straight into my eye, and I was not happy at all. Okay, here we go. Let's grab some old rags because we know it's going to dribble fluid everywhere. Right. There you go. Lots of fluid. And I'm just taking note of the condition of the fluid as it dribbles out. There we go. Look, fantastic. Right, so one banjo bolt. It did have both the seals on it, both the copper washers, which is good. We'll obviously be replacing those when we come to do the reassembly, whenever that's going to be. Um, okay, caliper off. Send these through here. This bike um, only gets used very infrequently, which is um, a problem for the brakes. They don't like being stood around, especially when they've been through moisture. So I am expecting to see some kind of corrosion in there. Let's just get rid of that. It's very important that you don't get brake fluid on the disc or the brake pads, that really does affect the coefficient of friction. And um, once it's in, you can't get it back out again. No, you can't clean it with brake fluid, it doesn't with brake cleaner, it doesn't work. All you can do on the disc is to, you can burn it out with heat and um, 
brake pads need to be replaced. You cannot get brake fluid out of brake, brake pads successfully. Okay, that's the caliper off. And I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll make a start stripping the caliper down and see what we see, see what we can find in there first of all. So I'll just rejig the camera for you. Okay, so first job, condition of the brake pads. Well, we've got a pin to take out by the looks of it, so. That out of there first. So on this particular caliper, pretty much all the fluid's drained away now, we'll just get that wiped off. On this particular caliper, we have to, to remove the pads fully, we need to remove that screw there. Okay, and I believe that's just a blanking cover and underneath, underneath there will be a, an Allen bolt. Let's have a look, see how how accurate we are on that one. Okay, yep, that's just the cover. And then we've got a number five Allen key underneath. So what have we got for that? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. time since this bike's been serviced. There's no copper paste whatsoever on this uh, slider pin, this retaining pin for the pads. Good news is it's not bent though. A bit gummed up. Brake pads, um, they're getting way down. In fact, they are essentially a warrant fail. Once you get down to about one millimeters of material on the brake pad, um, they really are beyond manufacturer's minimum spec. So those pads are gonna to need to be replaced. Chances are the customer won't want to pay for that, but um, if he wants a WAF, and if I'm going to give him a WAF, he's going to have to have some new brake pads. Okay, so brake pads to replace. We've grabbed some of those this afternoon. Right, like I said before, it's a floating caliper. This is what we call the pad carrier. And we've got the two sliders, we've got one here and one on the caliper itself. And those need to be smooth. You know, they, if they're gummed up and there's some resistance there, that's going to cause the piston, the, the caliper to, to drag on the disc. Um, it is quite smooth. There's not a lot of lubrication going on and it, it does feel quite jumpy. So it could have jammed. It could jam in a position and cause the pads to drag. The seals all look fine, so I'm quite happy with the seals on there. That, that seal should have stayed with that, because the groove's in there. We're going to pull that apart and clean it all anyway and degrease it and regrease it. So that's the pad carrier. Now, pistons. Well, there's stuff living in there, that's for sure. Spider webs and all sorts. Nice. Okay. So we need to remove these two pistons. Now, you've seen in the previous um, brake caliper strip down videos, uh, different techniques to removing the pistons from the caliper bodies. You can use a punch, depending on where the banjo um, fitment is on those Nissan Patrol calipers. It was right bang in the middle of the pistons. So it was really easy to use a punch to pop them out. A bit lazy, but hey, it's quick and it's efficient. Another way is to use compressed air, and I showed you how to do that. The one problem with compressed air is air is very springy. 
and the piston can be stuck, 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 and you're building up air pressure, and all of a sudden it will just fire out. It's quite uncontrolled, and hey, you could damage the piston, you could damage your hand. It works, don't get me wrong, and I use it all the time. But realistically, let's face it, you know, we've got a hydraulic system on the vehicle, in this case, the front brake system on this motorcycle, and we're, it's capable of producing over a thousand PSI of pressure within that hydraulic line. Why not use that to pump out the pistons before we disconnect the hydraulic hose? Makes complete sense, really. Um, so that's what I'm going to do on this particular video. I'm going to show you how to just to pump out, to pump up the caliper and watch the pistons coming out. Uh, I'll set up the camera so you can actually see what's going on. You can see the piston movement. Now, before we start, you might, during that part of the video, notice that when I release the brake lever on the handlebars, the pistons retract slightly. And then when I apply the lever again, they move further out and then they retract a little bit. It's like two steps forward, one step back. That retraction of the piston is really important. That's controlled by the square section main seal. I did cover this on the other video but you didn't actually see it operating. So here you can see the piston being retracted back into the caliper body um, by the square section main seal. It's not being retracted by pressure or vacuum or anything to do with the brake fluid whatsoever. It is being retracted by the square section main seal. It gets distorted, i.e. no longer be, remains a square. It gets distorted when the piston is pushed out under fluid pressure and then when the fluid pressure is released, i.e. zero pressure, we take our hand off the lever or your foot off the brake pedal in the car, um, the square section seal wants to revert back to its square section. And there's a lot of elasticity, a lot of stored energy in that seal, and that's what pulls the piston back into the caliper body. Now, if you've used the wrong um, lubricant when building up, say you put CRC spray on there, you've put some normal grease, or you've, you've just used something abstract, it's going to affect the friction coefficient between that main square section seal and the piston. And it's going to vary, it's going to change the distance that that piston retracts by. And that's a bad thing. It's a very bad thing, especially in the case of a motor motorcycle where the pistons are very small. And any additional travel, any additional retraction of that piston is going to cause the brake lever to be a lot closer to the handlebars when you apply the brakes. And that's bad, and if it's really bad, it's a warrant fail. That's as excessive travel. So when you build up the calipers, and we'll do this a bit later on, you should always, in my opinion, always use brake fluid on the main square section seal. Those seals are designed to work with brake fluid. Let's put a little smear on there, build it back up, job's a carrot. Okay, so that's about as close as I can get the camera. I don't want to risk it in brake fluid. And you can see the two pistons. Now, sod's law, there's bound to be a slight difference in resistance between these two pistons in the casting. So one of them is going to move and one of them isn't. Once the one that does move gets so far out, we'll put some kind of obstruction between it and the claws on the caliper body to prevent it coming any further out. And that's then going to force the other one to start moving out. And hopefully we can work it so that they both end up um, about to pop out of the casing about the same time. So just watch out for that retraction that I was talking about. Okay, so the bottom one's starting to move, and you can, so you can very clearly see now. Piston moving. So if I use my thumb, I can maybe apply a bit more force. It might not be enough to get the one to start. No, it's not. So I'll get a G clamp. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's stick that in there. The good thing about using a G-clamp is it allows us to keep adjusting the whole, the whole setup. Right, so now that one should get to the point where it won't come out any further. And we are now starting to get the other piston is now starting to move, which is great. That's exactly what we want to happen. Now, it is really important during this process that you wear gloves and eye protection because at some point, if you get it just wrong, and one of those pistons pops out, you're going to get brake fluid spraying all over the place. Hopefully not on the camera. Okay, so you can see now we've exceeded the distance 
on this piston. This one's now the one that's furthest in. So we're going to move the G-clamp across to here. We're going to stop that piston from coming out any further. And we'll work on the other one. Now it's a bit of a guess as to how far these pistons come out. Also, you need to make sure that the reservoir doesn't run out of fluid. If it does, and you start to pump air into the system, then you're going to have to start all over again. We should start to see this piston moving again. There we go. So we can bring that out to the same position as the other one. There we are. Okay, so let's pop the G-clamp back onto this piston. And that should just stop it from moving any further. Once one piston's popped out, we're not going to be able to use hydraulic pressure to cause the other one to move any further. So we have to be very careful to try and preserve that. There we go. So that's the other piston coming out now. We know we can go at least as far as the other one. Just taking it really slowly. I don't want to spray fluid all over the place if I can help it. G-clamp off. Stick that on there, there we are. Maybe, maybe I'll be in luck, just hold that. There we go, look. So now I'm holding the other one with my thumb, just applying a little bit of pressure, and the other piston is starting to walk out. That's good news, it means that they're pretty free now. I can keep doing that. Walk the other one out. We're about there. Okay, G clamp back on again. And then we can just get that last piston to the same position. And then we can finish it off on the bench, I reckon. Okay. One more pump. There we go. Nice and slowly now. Checking the reservoir. There you go. Brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the caliper off the hydraulic line. I'm going to try and keep hold of all that fluid. I'll put a rag around it and then we can strip it down on the bench. Okay, so you can see now very clearly that the two pistons we've managed to pop pretty much all the way out. Now there is still um, brake, some brake fluid left in this caliper. I've drained most of it out. Uh, we should be able to get those pistons out really easily. We don't want to damage them or score them. These uh, look, appear to be a coated kind of piston. They're not, um, they're not um, chrome plated. They're more like a nylon coating on the piston. So it could just be a buildup of dirt that's caused them to bind a little bit and we just need to give them a really good clean. But we'll buff them up and we'll see, uh, we'll be checking them for any kind of damage and stuff. Right, piston number one. Doesn't matter which piston comes out of which hole. Piston number two. Bit more fluid. Now, all in all, it's pretty clean in there. Get a blast out with the airline. Now, remember, it wasn't leaking fluid. Okay, I've removed my eye protection now because there's now essentially no more brake fluid around. There really isn't um, any risk. And it's a really humid day and those glasses, they keep, they keep steaming up and that's just annoying me. Okay, so if you look inside the caliper there, you can see the two chambers, a bit of dirt, um, nothing major. Now, on these particular calipers, they don't have that great big dust seal that we saw on the Nissan Patrol. 
they just have some very small seals down here now again there's nothing obvious that's going to cause those pistons to bind as badly as they were sure there's a bit of dirt on there but nothing major what i will be doing is i'll flick out the seals the main seals especially i might leave the dust seals alone they look pretty fiddly and i haven't got any new seal kits and the customer's not going to pay for them i'll flick out the main seals and make sure that there's no dirt or corrosion behind the main seal if there is and of course i can't see it at the moment if there is any uh, behind that main seal it's going to cause the main seal to be squashed against the piston more than it should be that's going to change that coefficient of friction between the main seal and the piston itself which is going to cause additional drag and that could be one of the reasons why the piston isn't retracting back properly um, it's something which people tend to overlook uh, you've got to flick the seals out and have a look and see if there's a buildup of dirt or corrosion behind those main seals. The same would happen as if you're going to put new seals in there. You've got to flick the old ones out and clean that groove, make sure it's spotless. So to do that, I'm going to use a scriber, a little pointy stick. Um, very carefully, I don't want to damage the seals. So we'll use one of those, a little tiny pointy thing, very useful. Just to work our way down the back of the seal, and we can just rotate it round. And there we go, look, hook the seal out. So that's one main seal. Now, now that the seals are out as well, I'm going to be able to feel how hard the rubber's got. Uh, over time, these seals tend to get a bit harder with age. And again, if that's the case, then you're just going to have to replace them. You can't put tough stuff back in again. Um, you probably can't see very well, but there is some residue, some buildup of corrosion in that main square section uh, seal, the, the little groove that sits in there. And I'm going to clean all that out and I'll clean the seals before I refit them. I'm very dubious about taking out the dust seals. I know I should do. Whether they're ever going to go back in again, I don't know. Let's have a go. Okay. Nasty. That's one. Not happy. Two. Now behind those dust seals, because they're the first line of defense, there's a lot of corrosion. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but it's it's pretty yellowy. See in there? There you go. Look, all that stuff there. It's a bit like plaque on your teeth, you know, it needs to be it needs to be scraped out. You can see there, look, all the all the build-up. So that's another little job. Get all that cleaned out of there. And then we'll attempt to try and get those dust seals back in again. Dust seals usually don't like to go back in. Not when they're as old as this. You may have to bite the bullet and buy a new seal kit. Wow, there's some real build-up in there. So again, it, that style of dust seal is actually um, running straight onto the piston surface. And it could be applying resistance, causing that piston to bind. So, Hey, something was causing them, um, making them hard to get out. We had to use you know, quite a bit of hydraulic pressure to, to get them to move. It shouldn't, that shouldn't be the case. Okay, so I'm going to continue to clean out these four grooves. These are the dust seal grooves and the main seal grooves on each of these two um, holes where the pistons go. Chambers, cylinders, call them what you like, I don't care. Um, so I'm going to continue to clean those up. That's going to take a while, so there's no point in doing it to camera, you'll get bored. Um, I'm also going to clean up the pistons. Um, now, I won't be using any kind of abrasives because this, these essentially are plastic pistons. So that's a good thing in some ways. They're not going to rust and things, but, you know, who knows, we'll give them a clean. And also, I will clean up the sliders and re-grease those, ready for reassembly again. And I'm going to clean up the, the seals, to get rid of all the dirt. So there's quite a bit of dirt wedged on the back of these seals, which will be causing them to grip the pistons more than they should do. Okay, so I've cleaned out all the four grooves inside that caliper body. I'm just going to blast it out now with some contact. And then we can reinspect. It's 
pretty important we get this kind of stuff nice and clean. It's the whole reason for doing the job. Okay, so there's a little bit more in there to clean out. We're almost there though, it's looking pretty good. Once I've finished reassembling the caliper, then I'll give the whole outside a bit of a wire brush once the pistons are back in. I put the banjo bolt in so I don't contaminate it. I don't want to do that now because it just creates a lot of mess. I've got to try and get it all out of those chambers. So I'll carry on and I'll report back. Okay, so the caliper body is nice and clean now. Those grooves uh, where the seals run. I'm just going to run the seals now through a rag just to clean off any debris and so on that's on there. Any build up of deposits, anything that's going to distort those seals when they're in position and cause additional pressure between the seal and the piston itself. There is quite a bit. I mean, it's an old bike, there's bound to be a bit of corrosion in there, it's just the way they are. Dust seals have seen better days, in all honesty. Not really very impressed with those at all. They're all starting to break up. Should have new ones. Probably isn't going to get new ones. Worst case scenario. They may not even get put back in again. I'll just advise the customer. If he, can't, uh, if he isn't going to pay for new ones and it needs new ones then. It'll work fine for a while. He does only ride on the road. He doesn't go off road with it. I mean, there are some calipers out there that don't have dust seals. They, they only have the main square section seal. That's it. A lot of Range Rovers and stuff like that. Which is bizarre, I know, but that's the way they are. Okay, so the pistons themselves then. There is quite a bit of residue on there. You can see that, aren't it? You see all, those, all that build-up of gunk on the surface? Sure, it's nowhere near as bad as those patrol pistons or the... Or the That's going to help clean it off. A bit of brake fluid, brake cleaner. If I can't get it to clean up properly, I'm going to have to use some kind of abrasive. Um, extremely fine wet and dry sandpaper. Um, the kind of stuff you use for buffing up filler and that kind of thing. Really, really fine stuff. Just to get some of that, uh, some of that taken off. Okay, I'll go and find some of that and we'll give it a go. Okay, so I'm just really lightly sanding the surface of these pistons to try and just get that get it nice and smooth really. Um, I'll try cleaning them and it just won't come off. So, just give them a very gentle run over. I'm not really a fan of plastic pistons. Now, notice that I'm not sanding them in this direction. I'm actually sanding them around the piston. Uh, that is going to help to prevent any kind of leakage. Just don't forget when you sand something, you leave little tiny grooves in it, you know. Impressed, really. At least they're not going to rust. Quite a few boat trailers these days, and the braking systems have gone on to. Um, I mean, over in New Zealand, we can have hydraulic brakes on our trailers. So, a lot of the trailers that are used for launching boats, they've gone away from steel pistons, and they're using almost like a ceramic kind of piston, which of course doesn't have any problems with corrosion, but they do still bind up in the caliper. They still get deposits building up on them. 
and um, that causes additional resistance and causes them to stick on the seals and bind and that, um, that causes the brakes to, to bind, either bind on or not operate at all if they're really bad. Okay. See how that looks. It is one of the problems when you're wearing gloves, you lose that feel, you know. Mechanics, we feel stuff. We can feel it better than we can see it usually. I'm just trying to determine whether these marks are a build-up on top of the surface of the piston, or whether they're actually where you know it's erosion into the, into the plastic. I think it's erosion into the plastic, to be honest. So the, there really is a limit to how much I can sand away at that before I'm going to start to you know cause problems with the overall dimensions of the piston and cause the Cause the main seal to leak. But it needs to be smooth. If it's not smooth, it should be replaced, you know. One more quick whiz round. I think it's going to seal okay. So you can see all the dulling. This bit's good. This bit's really dull. And it, I don't think it's a build-up of residue. I think it's actually wear on the surface of the piston itself because it is only plastic. You know? It's not as it's not, it's not as hard wearing as um, as a chrome-plated piston. I haven't really come across many plastic pistons on motorcycles before. Not really a fan, actually. Maybe back then it was a good idea, and they thought, "Oh, we'll try that. Let's give that a go." I've seen the ceramic ones on the trailers actually crack, um, which can cause instant failure of the brakes, which isn't a good idea. You don't, so you don't get that problem with steel pistons; they don't just crack. Maybe manufacturers have gone away from them again now, because I've not really seen many recently on motorcycles. If I had a buffing wheel, I'd even consider sticking it through the buffing wheel for a few seconds, just to try and polish them up. Might give me a better idea of what, what I'm actually looking at here. No doubt in the manufacturer's manual it's going to say if there's any kind of deviate, uh, deformity or buildup of residue or whatever it is, scoring on these pistons to replace them. And he's asked me to fix it, because he has a pretty good idea that he knows I can. Not often I fail. Failure is not an option. Okay. Right, that's as good as it's going to get. I think. Yeah, there's not much more I can do with that, really. Okay, so both pistons are cleaned up, seals are cleaned up. Casing is about as clean as we're going to get it in there. So I'm going to refit all the seals. We'll pop some brake fluid onto the pistons themselves, and then we'll slide them in and see how uh, see how easily they go in. In all honesty, because that's usually a telltale sign as to how successful the whole repair is going to be. 
Bear in mind so far we've used no new parts, which is a rarity for me. I like to put new stuff on whenever I can. I like to make things so that they're going to last for a long time, not till Come on, square section main seal. You can go in better than that. There we go. Right, that's one in. It's a good job I don't have chunky fingers, he says. If you're going to use a scriber like this, you've got to be extremely careful you don't damage the seal. It's quite a good idea to have one that's a little bit blunt. This one's not so bad because it hasn't got a point right at the end of it. There we go. Okay, so that's both main seals in. Ugh, now for the dust seals. Oh, if you buy new seals, you often get rubber grease. Some kind of grease and a little sachet to use. A bit warm today to use on the uh, on the seals when you fit them, and of course between the seals and the piston. My recommendation is you don't use that. That rubber grease is only there for a short time anyway, and then it gets dissolved into the brake fluid. I think you'd be far better off, like I do, using brake fluid itself as a lubricant to build up the. Build the caliper back up again. We don't want excessive lever travel. The whole like, the whole reason for doing this is to improve the brakes, not make them any worse. Um, and for a garage to say, "Oh, don't panic; it'll get better over time." Hey, you know, you might need those brakes the minute you get on the road. You can tell I'm. I won't say I'm not not a fan of garages, but um, there's a lot of bad ones out there, isn't there? You know. For whatever reason, some places don't like to do a good job. I think it's important for a mechanic to repair every vehicle as if it's his own. I can think of one or two mechanics that you don't want to have your car repaired like they repair those, but anyway, not to worry. Okay, my biggest concern is that these dust seals are starting to break up and when I come to put the pistons back in, a bit of that rubber is going to get drawn down over the surface of, between the piston and the, and the main seal. Right, so if you can see I have now cleaned out, degunked and refitted, it's not, not the prettiest place in the world but anyway, um, the seals. The main seals are in really good nick so I'm hoping this thing's going to work. Now the two pistons are the same size, so they can go into either of the two holes. Um, we just need to put a little bit of brake fluid onto the seals to help to lubricate the whole thing as we put, put the pistons back in again. And of course, let's put a bit on the pistons themselves as well. Right. When you're putting the pistons back in, you've just got to take your time and I've just, you've just got to make sure that you're getting it parallel to the bore. You don't want to be going in at an angle. There you go. So it's just a bit stubborn to get past that dust seal. Whoa. That's tight. I don't like that. Let's try the other one. It's going to be a real pain. I'm going to take those dust seals out. Shouldn't be that hard to go in.
Well, when I'm doing normal um, steel piston calipers, I'll be expecting to be able to push those pistons in just with my thumbs. And there is no way, absolutely no way that I can get those to go in just under thumb pressure. It's not going to deform. Let's just give it a go and see what happens. There's never any guarantees. Ooh, there you go. That's exactly what I was talking about using compressed air. They can come out with a fair whack. Don't panic, I'm fine. I don't think that will make the final cut. Okay, so just while we've got one piston out, let's flick out that dust seal and see how much easier it is for that piston to to be fitted because I have a hunch that it's the dust seal that's causing the problems here. Right, one dust seal. Okay. One piston. Oh yeah, look at that, straight in. So, we're gonna get, I'm gonna get this other piston out, we're gonna bin the dust seals, uh, because they're the ones that are causing all the problems. The customer's not gonna replace them anyway. And um, we'll reassemble it, and we'll get it bled up. I don't think there's any need to do the master cylinders today. We'll save that for another video, when I know there's one that's really bad. Um, I'm pretty confident that the problems with this caliper have been down to the fact uh, these dust seals, and you can see them here. See all those little tails of rubber hanging off? What's happening is, as, as we're putting the piston in, they're getting drawn in um, and getting wedged between the piston itself and the body of the caliper, causing the whole thing to bind up. It really is such a small thing, but that exactly that can cause the problems. So let me fight my way through getting this other piston out. We're going to have to put it back on the bike, bleed it up, pump it out. Um, because there's no way I can get it out any other way. It wasn't even moving under compressed air. And uh, I'll flick that seal out, build it back up, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I gave it a quick go with compressed air in the vise after putting a G-clamp on the good piston, the one we've already removed the, the uh, dust seal from. And um, yes, it may be jump again. always does. hate doing that. Um, so, let's just flick this other dust seal out. Now, obviously, if we were fitting new ones, it wouldn't have all that gunk on there causing the problem. Uh, this one does. It isn't going to work with those in there. It'll work fine short term if he doesn't go off road a bit too much. Um, but he is aware that he's going to have to fork out, save up for a seal kit. And I'm going to have to do this job all over again with a nice new seal kit in there. That's if he decides to keep the motorcycle. Probably not. Right. Okay. So we're just going to clean the piston off, make sure there's no bits of that seal, that dust seal on that piston. Put a bit of fresh brake fluid on there, on the piston as well. Let's see if we can get that to, to go back in. There we go. Easy. So it's all about getting it running parallel to the bore. If you're trying to get it at an angle, you're going to cause damage to stuff, and that's why I was being quite tentative as putting it in. So both those two pistons now are pretty free. If I put compressed air on, they're going to fly straight out, no bother at all. There's no need for me to do that. We can watch also, once we've bled the system up, we can watch for that piston retraction again. We can watch the piston being drawn back into the, mass, the main uh, caliper body 
when we release the brake pedal, uh, brake lever. Uh, and the retraction varies on the size of the caliper and, and, and what the manufacturer has decided to use as a compound for that main square section seal and the size of the seal and the section of it and so on. So we don't know what the spec is and they're never going to give you a spec, but it needs to have some retraction. If it doesn't, then the pads are going to stay pressed against the disc and you're going to have binding brakes. Okay, so what else have we got to do? Well, we've got some sliders to clean up. Let's give that a go. Just get the rust off. Excellent. Now, let's just try that on there. Make sure she's not too loose. <coughs> there we go. Right, time for some grease. Now, on these sliders, remember calipers can get very, very hot. It's important that we use some heat-resistant grease. In this case, um, I call it copper slip because I'm English. Um, copper paste if you're New Zealandish. That's one. And putting this copper paste on there is copper slip. It's going to help those sliders to stay sliders for a long time yet. There we go. See the difference now, look? Much better than before. That's exactly what it should be doing. Allowing that caliper to slide from side to side. So we get a nice even pressure on the two brake pads. So what else have we still got to do? Well, we've got pads to fit back in again. These are anti-rattle shims. Now we're going to put the pads back in again, the old ones, because again, you know, if we're going to be putting a seal kit at some point in the future, then um, it's all good. Okay, copper paste on the back of the pad. That then goes on, you, know, you put then the anti-rattle shim on there. Okay, so now that's in place. It's all a bit bent, unfortunately. There we go, that's better. All right, and then we should also put copper paste where the contacts are made. You know what? I don't like that. The reason why I don't like it is we've got, you can see here, the marks where the claws make contact with the pad. But at this end of the pad here, there's no contact because um, the claw is beyond that anti-rattle plate. What that's going to do, because there's no anti the anti-rattle plate doesn't go far enough down the pad, it's going to cause the pad to have um, very little braking force in this area here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. And that now is going to allow the pad to sit completely squarely in the caliper. Hey, it's a dirt bike. It doesn't matter if the brakes squeal a bit. The important thing is that the brakes work. Now, the other one's different. Both the two pistons are in contact with the anti-rattle shim. So what we'll do is we'll flick that off and we'll put a little bit of copper paste behind it. There we 
we go. Oh, it's a bit rusty as well, so we'll give it a bit of a sand. Get all that rust. Rust is bad. I'll even file it. Work. Yeah, there's some rust blobs and that's going to affect the whole thing sitting squarely. So the back of the pad now is nice and smooth, all that's sorted out, and somewhere, here we are, look, yes, anti-rattle shim. So we're going to stick a bit of the cup paste on the back of the pad, and then of course the anti-rattle shim on after that. Now it is important not to contaminate the brake pad, there we go. Um, before we build that up, there was the problem of the pin. That's the retaining pin for the brake pad. That was also badly corroded and gummed up. We'll just give that a, look, a quick runoff. Get rid of all the debris. And again, that can have copper paste on it. It's fine to have it on there. It's there to help those pads move in and out freely. We don't want them binding, because if they bind, they're going to stick on the disc and slow you down. But you need to do it conservatively. You don't want too much on there because don't forget these things can get hot and we don't want that copper paste to migrate onto the brake pads or the brake disc. That would be extremely bad. So just bear that in mind when you're servicing your brakes. You know, brakes work on friction. We don't want to be reducing that friction where it's needed. Maybe there. No staging on this video, that's for sure. Right, done. Okay, so again, we'll just put a little bit of copper paste on there. Just a smear, just a thin layer, and that's going to help those pads to slide freely up and down. Okay. So, pads. That's the pad that goes against the pistons. Oh, I don't know what we forgot to do. At the other end of the pads, well, one end we've got the pin that retains the pad. And at this end, this end of the brake pad fits into a spring clip down the bottom. And again, there's usually a lot of corrosion on there. And what's a good idea is just, just only where it makes contact, just clean off those those flats again a file is a great idea because it makes sure that the whole thing stays flat rather than sandpaper motorcycle brake pads are quite quite badly stamped out of some of them and you'll find sharp edges um, things that are going to cause that brake pad to bind and stick in the in that little slot when i'm fitting new brake pads I actually do this right from a brand new pad. I give them a good clean up with a file and make sure that the contact points of the pad are nice and smooth so that it has every possible chance of working like it should do rather than binding and you know, it makes the whole thing feel a bit nicer. And you, on a motorcycle, you notice that. On a car, not so much, but on a motorbike, especially the front brake, you've got a lot of feel with your fingers and you can tell when things are not quite right. And your front brake, well, that's really important. Okay. Now, don't be too worried. I'm not taking lots of material off here. I'm just really making them what they should have been when they were first made. Now, you can see what I'm doing now. Look. Just clean the end of it up. 
these things are all made to a cost, you know, brake pads. Especially you buy aftermarket ones, especially the cheaper ones. Nobody spends the money or the time um, tidying these things up like this. So it's a good idea for you to do it because nobody else will do it. And again, a little tiny bit of copper paste on the areas that you just cleaned up. These are the contact points at the end of that brake pad. And again, a little tiny bit. You don't need much. You really don't. Just enough to help it slide in and out freely. It's going to make the bike feel a lot nicer when you brake. Okay, so one caliper. That's the pad that goes by the behind, in front of the pistons. So that's the outer. Drop that in. There we go. There we go. That's it. She's in. Right. And then the outer pad. Let's get that located. It's a lot easier doing it now on the bench than it is trying to locate these things on the bike. And lastly, we'll pop that through there. Allen key. See how free that is now? It's not even, it's not picking up at all, it's just running straight through those pads. Obviously I'll tighten that up when it's on the bike. Now, let's just move that out a little bit, so we can get that pad further out. There we go. Okay, I think we're about there. One clip's there, right. So that caliper now can be fitted back onto the bike. We can reattach the brake flexi hose and we can bleed it up. And I think we're going to be a lot better off than we were before. Okay, so one caliper, all ready to go back on the bike. Now we need to make sure that those pads stay in position. Extremely important. A few seconds now can save a lot of time later on. Yeah, just got to breathe the balls free. Yeah. Um, new ban uh, sorry, new banjo bolt ceiling washers, a couple of washers. So that's going to go on now. And then we can bleed up the caliper. Okay, perfect bottle to bleed into. This one's a uh, Watch of Thieves, very good. Let's pop that into there. <clears throat> now, it's a little bit awkward because I'm on my own. And um, 
haven't yet trained the dog to help lead my bike. Okay, so we're just going to top up the reservoir. <coughs> is currently completely empty. Hopefully I can reach. There we go. Right, so and so we're just gonna bleed this up now. Very slowly. <clears throat> it always takes a while when the system has been completely drained. Well, it's taken a while to bleed up, I must admit. Um, it's been a bit of a pain, they're not normally this bad. We have now got um, fluid travel, as you can see there, look. And we are getting some air out of the system as well. See some more air bubbles going through. There's definitely air in the system, so we'll just keep working our way along with the bleeding. Um, another way of doing this, if you good, is um, you can actually open that and use a pair of pliers. Just gently to nip the pipe. That will act as a one-way valve. Like that. I actually find that a really good way to get the whole thing started. It provides the resistance that the, that the mass cylinder needs to, to really pump, pump that fluid down. It's getting quite a good lever up here now, a lot better than it used to be. As a rule of thumb, if you do five pumps and you're getting no more air out, then your system's pretty good. It means that you've basically got all the, you know, it takes about five pumps for the fluid to travel from the mass cylinder down to the caliper and out through the bleed nipple. So if you do stick to a rule of five pumps, um, if you see any air within those five pumps, start counting again. And uh, once you've got that, then you need to lock it off, go for a ride, see how it feels. Sometimes a second bleed is required, it just depends on the style of the caliper and where the bleed nipples are. Um, if you've got a bike where the bleed nipples are down the bottom, and it's got two calipers, one on each side of the wheel, two brake discs, then there's a really good chance that somebody's fitted them the wrong way around. Uh, bleed nipples are at the top, and that's because air goes up in the fluid. Quite simple. If you've got bleed nipples down the bottom, you're never going to bleed it up. Quite simple. Okay, so I'm going to finish this off. It's nearly there now. Finished bleeding. And uh, it, as you can see, the wheel spins beautifully freely now. So those pistons are retracting properly, nothing's binding. That's just exactly how it should be. Very happy with that. And it was all down, <clears throat> it was all down to those deteriorated dust seals. And uh, these little bits of rubber that are breaking off were getting trapped between the piston and the, the cylinder wall, causing it to jam. So we've binned those because we don't have any new ones. Maybe it needs one more bleed, there might be a little bit more trapped air in there. Uh, I'm also going to lube the pivot on the lever because it's really dry and notchy. Um, I'm going to suggest to the customer that he gets himself a new seal kit for the caliper. And hey, maybe you'll get one for the mass cylinder at the same time and then we can overhaul that and I can do a video on that as well. So I'll finish off bleeding this up and, and then I can run it back to the customer this afternoon. But uh, I hope that's helped you to understand um, how to strip down a motorcycle caliper, a floating, uh, this was a 
twin piston floating caliper, um, how to strip it down, how to clean it, how to inspect it, how to reassemble it, and, uh, and of course then you see me bleed it up now. The bleeding process I know I haven't covered particularly well in this video and I will be doing a separate video on how to bleed brakes and that's going to be covered on the Yamaha Viking that we're going to be working on on the brakes probably Sunday I would say so not long away at all I've got all the parts for that now. Um, so there you go my name is Andy Young and I'm a lecturer down at Unitech in Auckland and I like to do these videos to help my students to see uh, real world problems uh, with vehicles how to diagnose those faults, how to rectify them, um, and do the repairs. So there you go. Thanks for watching.